All right, you guys, today we're talking about an interesting topic. It's called ground resonance. Uh, for those of you who haven't heard about it, it's something that's scary that can happen to a multi-bladed helicopter, uh, three or more blades. Um, last video I was talking about, um, or a couple videos ago, I was talking about two versus three blades. Well, one of the things that people brought up was, yes, these multi-blade helicopters can get ground resonance. Let's talk a little bit what, what, about what that is, how you get into it, how you can avoid it, okay? So what is ground resonance to start with? You guys are familiar with the resonant frequency, okay? You have, uh, you know, all different types of resonant frequencies. Essentially what happens is when the helicopter lands and the skids contact the ground, there's a shock vibration that can go from the skid contacting the ground up to the rotor head. And then that vibration will hit the rotor head, come back down, go to the skid again. And every time it goes between the skid and the rotor head, skid, rotor head, it's going to actually exaggerate. It's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger until the helicopter will actually start vibrating so much that it will fall apart. Like there'll be such a strong vibration. The helicopter actually rips itself apart. Watch this, you guys. There's a couple examples right here. Um, the first one that you guys are seeing is a Schweitzer and, uh, and it lands and within the, the video is sped up, but within a few seconds, you see the whole helicopter coming apart. Uh, the next one is an A-Star, same thing. It landed, um, starts vibrating back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And eventually the thing starts ripping itself apart and you see how the, the whole front end of the cabin, everything comes off. It's absolutely crazy. The last one was an interesting one. It was a Chinook helicopter, a multi-bladed rotor system, and uh, this thing was at the end of its life. They, they wanted to test this, so they strapped it down, and you'll start to see uh, how the helicopter starts vibrating more and more and more until eventually the whole thing actually rips apart and the mast rips off and the blades go ripping apart and stuff. It's very scary, very crazy, okay? Um, let's talk about a few things that different helicopters have they all have slightly different designs. We used to fly the Schweitzer all the time. Uh, the Schweitzer had oleos, which are kind of like shocks down here in this part of the skid gear. And uh, so that would help absorb that shock when you landed. Um, and then another feature that the helicopter has is a lead leg damper, okay? Um, so multi-bladed helicopters typically have some form of a lead leg damper like this. And um, so the, the the factors that can cause you to have ground resonance would be, let's say in a Schweitzer that has oleos, if the oleos are soft, so if they're um, older and they're wearing out, you don't have as much of a dampening effect. And so that shock can transfer easier from that skid up to the top of the rotor head. The other factor on the other end is uh, the lead leg damper. So what does the lead leg damper do? It allows the blade like this, see, um, if I move like that, you can see how that blade has the ability to move fore and aft, right? Well, without this lead leg damper right here, it would actually just lead and lag um, way too much, okay? So it would have the ability to just kind of fly forward or fly back like crazy. So we only want it to be able to fly a little bit, so we need that damper to be able to stop it. But inside of there is rubber, and if that rubber wears out over the years, then it becomes not as effective. Um, that can actually lead to ground resonance as well. Um, in this helicopter and in a few others like the Bell 407 and the A-Star and a few others, um, what they've done is they've put a foam here. So the helicopter is actually riding on this, uh, it's almost like a, an air ride for a semi pick or a semi truck. Um, it's riding on these foam pieces right here. You can have a look there. And then if we go around to the front of the helicopter, we can see right here. Okay, and what that's actually allowing the helicopter to do is it can rock. If I push this back and forth like that, you can see the whole helicopter is actually able to rock like that on the foam, okay? So uh, that's a, one of the methods that this uh, helicopter uses to be able to dampen that ground resonance, okay? How does it start? Well, like I say, usually it's a bit of a rough landing. So when you land, you hit one of the edge of the skids, maybe the back corner or something, and that creates a, a frequency, a, a, sorry, a vibration, and that goes up to the, the head and then back and forth. So if you have things wearing out, like those foams are wearing out, they're not dampening as well. Um, the lead leg dampers, oleos, all those kind of things, um, as they're getting to the end of their life, you can be more susceptible to ground resonance, okay? So we want to make sure that we're doing proper maintenance on the helicopters. We're avoiding those things through proper maintenance. But as a pilot, what can we do? 
If you're on the ground, this is actually one of the test questions on the written exam. Um, if you're on the ground and you've landed and you start to feel the helicopter shaking, there's vibration and the vibration seems to be getting worse. So it's actually building. Get the helicopter off the ground, okay? That's the number one thing you can do. Um, I don't care where your RPMs are, if your RPMs are low, if they're high, um, just rev up. If your RPMs are down at idle, just rev the helicopter up as quickly as you can and get the thing off the ground. The moment the skids leave the ground, ground resonance is gone, okay? It's called ground resonance for a reason. It has to be in contact with the ground. Once those skids are up in the air, there's no resonant frequency anymore because it has nothing to hit, okay? So uh, whatever situation you guys are in, if you're in the process of shutting down, if you've already pulled off your fuel, you've already cut off your fuel, then it's pretty much impossible to do anything about it. You can't fire up the helicopter fast enough. As you saw in some of those videos, how quickly it develops, you can't start the helicopter fast enough and, uh, and the thing is just gonna do what it's gonna do. Hopefully the blades slow down fast enough that you can actually get it stopped. If you have a rotor brake, crank on that rotor brake. It's gonna be a lot cheaper to fix a, a rotor brake or replace a rotor brake. If you just crank it on, then it is to replace the whole helicopter with all the components broken and everything on it, okay? So number one answer, get the helicopter off the ground. That's gonna be the best thing you can do um, if you get into a situation where you feel that ground resonance. You can, uh, you can technically get it on startup if there was some sort of a, a vibration to start with in the aircraft and that started to build, all it takes is a vibration that builds, 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 and then you start getting this, this frequency again from the skid to the head and back and forth again. Um, so that's my little uh, rant on ground resonance here today. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, please, as always, do me a couple of favors. Give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'm going to talk to you guys on the next one. See ya.